Colorado Avalanche Hockey on Altitude is brought to you by Dodge. Visit Dodge.com for your local dealer today. Frost Brewed Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. Your Colorado Porsche dealers. To find one near you, visit Colorado.PorscheDealer.com. CenturyLink, a trusted technology partner, frees you to focus on what matters. CenturyLink, your link to what's next. And by Shortline Subaru. Save money, drive better. Avalanche on a Friday night at Pepsi Center in Denver, Colorado, hosting the Phoenix Coyotes. Second game after resuming play following the Olympic break. Let's take a look at tonight's Ford starting lineup. And Peter, tell me about the starting goaltenders. Hello, Michael. Good to see you again, buddy. Yeah, what have you been doing? Uh, you know, watching the Olympics. Thomas Christ starts in goal four. The Phoenix Coyotes, who played last night in Winnipeg. It is a top turnaround coming from Winnipeg Customs getting into Colorado. So the Avalanche will want to come out strong early. And for Semyon Varlamov, his first start after the Olympic break. And Mike, we talked about it in the pregame show. He was the Avalanche's most valuable player in the first part of the season. If he is that, in the last part, these last 23 games of the Avalanche are going to be strong going into those playoffs. And Peter, you and I both saw and talked to him earlier today. He just seems so relaxed and ready to go, doesn't he? I think he's one of those guys that he's glad it's over. You know, he, he wished it had ended differently, the whole Olympic experience for the Russian team. But now he can concentrate on just one thing. And meanwhile, Peter, the opponent in goal, Thomas Grice, what a career. Now... Not that many games, but he's played four against the Avalanche in his career. He's 4-0. His goals against average is 1.25 and a save percentage of 963 against the Avalanche in those four games. Yeah, he's, he was including a, this year 1-0. Exactly. He was originally a San Jose Shark. Pass in front for O'Reilly. Skipped away from him. And it's back behind the net. Centered in front by Parento. Dipped back in the corner. Parento pass across. Slowed up. Hate a shot. Off the chest. Of Grice and the rebound in the slot and scooped up and taken away by Ekman Larson. Now you'll see number 23 on the ice a lot for the Coyotes. He leads the team in ice time and seventh in the NHL with nearly 26 minutes of ice time again. And despite being very upset or disappointed, I guess is a better better word, Mike, about the last game, the 6-4 loss to LA. They did a lot of things really well in that game. And one of them was pressure with speed. And they want to do that again here tonight. The Avalanche lost their game. They resumed the play for the Coyotes. They were in Winnipeg last night and lost in a shootout. You know, and, and Mike, that this is that club. If you if you run it all the way down, this is a club Phoenix that is that club that is trying to get into the playoffs. They have 65 points. Dallas 66. That Dallas is that club right now that's on the bubble. As far as eight, that wild card, the two wild card teams right now are Minnesota and Dallas. After the faceoff, Coyotes have the puck. Ribeiro leads the, the team in points with 41. He's wearing number 63 for the Phoenix Coyotes. And the puck is at the center. Tossed back into the Avalanche zone. Pass across for Hayda. Returned and brought out the center by Nick Holden. His pass picked off. Doan fires a pass across. It was tipped, but Ribeiro has got it. Shoots it back behind the net. Doan picks up. He's squeezed in the boards by Mitchell. Mitchell's stick goes back behind the avalanche net. And so does the puck. And Hayter arrives there. He gets checked against the backboard. Coyotes Doan trying to work it free. Shane Doan. Had the puck for a moment, taken away by the ass. McGinn, his pass deflected away. Ribeiro's pass stopped by McGinn. He pushes it up ice, and then a pass to center, kicked off the skate of Talbot. And out of the net comes Grice to play the puck. But he didn't get it far enough, kept in by Talbot over to Bordalo. His shot gets blocked, and the Coyotes have the puck. Brought out to center ice by Jeff Halpern. He passed across for David Moss, is tipped deep into the corner. Moss chases for the Coyotes. He's held up by Nick Get into the avalanche, and the pass comes out to center ice. Ekman Larson got it back for Phoenix. He makes the pass up ice. That's blocked at the blue line, and Bordalo comes cruising back to pick up the puck. He finds Gennon. He'll skate out to center ice. Pass the red line, shot in around the boards. Picked up along the far side by Stassi. Flings it towards the corner. That's blocked. Rolled back behind the net. And McCullough will skate out to center ice. 
The defenseman for Phoenix makes the pass for Bodker over the line for a trailer. And the shot is tipped high and towards the near side corner of the Colorado zone. We're scoreless in the first period. We played just over three minutes. There to center ice by Landeskog. Skates in, his pass across, caught a Phoenix skate, and Bodker picks up the puck for the Coyotes. Going to move out to center, he's taken down. Landeskog at the red line with a puck. Pass over the line for Stassi. He gets poke check. And the puck is flung back behind the net. Centering pass deflected. Scooped up by ex-Avalanche player Derek Morris. And he'll shoot the puck from center into the Colorado zone. Sark played off the boards. Just kept inside the line by the Coyotes. And a shot whistles wide of the net. It comes around the boards and out to center. Your thoughts on the start of this game, Peter? Right, it's as you would expect. It's very quick by the Colorado Avalanche. And I, you know, I expected things to be ramped up speed-wise for all clubs in the league after the break. 17 days off completely for hockey players a long time. They're rested, they're in shape, they're ready to go. So it's going to be a fast pace in these early games. Rice makes the pass towards the near corner. Stone shot, bounces out to center. Stone picks up, trying to get in the way by Hato. Holds him up, and Duchesne makes a nice defensive play to come back. Gives to Holden, puts the puck around, back behind the net. No Eric Johnson for the Avalanche, serving his second game of a two-game suspension, so Holden has stepped up and is paired up with Hayda for this game. Mike, if ever there was an indication to people of the Patrick Waugh that is the coach that Patrick Waugh people thought was going to be the coach, it was the press conference after last game. He walked into that press conference, Mike, and he was as relaxed. Now, this club had just lost at home. They had a 4-2 lead. They gave up four consecutive goals to the L.A. Kings, and he talked about all the positives. He didn't go running into the press conference ranting and raving about this is bad, that's bad. I mean, he was very logical about it. what went wrong, what they have to improve on. But there was none of that, I think, what people expected as far as the Patrick Wall is volatile and all over his team. Holden skates out to center. And the offside play by the Colorado Avalanche has stopped the action here in our first period. Well, for Dave Tipp and the Phoenix Coyotes, it's been a, a different kind of season. They have scored a lot of goals this year. They're not used to that, but they've probably given up more than they're used to giving up. But Mike, this is one of the best coaches and most well-respected coaches in the NHL. He's third in active coach as far as wins behind Babcock and Winville. Right there tells you what kind of coach he is. Dumped in from center ice by the Avalanche. Yandel's pass right up the middle, out to center ice, the handoff. Goes to Bodger. He's into the Colorado zone. Tapped off the boards. Blocked along the far side by Landeskog for Colorado. Looks for an opening. Sends it back behind and back to the far side. Turned over towards Gannon. Ahead for Stansky. And shot in behind the net. Grice will handle the puck for the Coyotes. His pass blocked behind the net. Avalanche on it. Scooped up by Landeskog. Rolled it back behind the net. McKinnon. Center shot. Set. Rebound. It's not in, it got blocked. Barry had pinched in, had a, just a great opportunity there, and denied. Back to center ice, race for the puck. Pushed in by the Coyotes, pass comes across the middle. Scooped up along the far wing, Lemko towards the far side wall, followed up by Verbata. It's a play, taken away, carried in down the right side, McKinnon winds and fires, and the save made by Grice, and he'll cover the puck and get a face off in the Phoenix zone. Well, good work by this line. Again, McKinnon on the right side. With Stastny and Landis got a good puck moving. Barry coming in from the point. Such a big fa factor this year for the Colorado Avalanche has been in the improved offensive instincts by the defense. Jumping up into the play, getting involved. We saw last game Holden and Benoit both picking up points, assisting a goal respectively, Mike but it was on the power play, but jumping up into the play. Sark shot right up the face-off after the Avs won the draw. Is caught by Grice. We'll have another face-off. And there he is, Nathan McKinnon. Boy, is he going well right now. Look at that. Nine straight games with a point. And, and how do you qualify it? Well, no player in the league has a longer streak. It's consecutive games, Mike, with, with a point. It's the longest one in the league by himself right now. Landis Dogg's nine-game streak ended last game. Vermette's ten-game streak ended last night. Race for the puck to the corner. Reverse back by Talbot around the boards of the Phoenix zone. Sarch pinching in from the right point. Gives the puck a kick. Talbot trying to center. Blocked. Turned across. And then carried out to center ice by Michael Stone. 
reaches the red line. He'll dump the puck around the boards. It's hopping. Kick to and the puck goes over the glass, and the puck is gone out of play. So we'll be back with more first period action from Denver with the Colorado Avalanche, and the Coyotes are scoreless. Welcome back to the Pepsi Center. We are scoreless in the first period with Patrick Ron. Patrick, you told us this morning that you wanted your team to start out quick and fast. What do you like about what you see? Well, we had a really good chance on a couple of minutes ago when Bar I mean, Tyson went in. I mean, I thought he block probably blocked it himself, but I thought we had good offense. We had a few good chances, good shots on that. We just want to continue that. Thanks, Patrick. You're very welcome. Uh, All right, guys, back up to you. All right, thank you very much, Julie. So no score, 13.45 to play in our first period. Matt Duchesne's line is out for the Avalanche. That was P.A. Parenteau and uh, Ryan O'Reilly as Varlamov covers the puck. Well, Peter, the, after, the, after the Olympic break, this is the second game. And you talked about energy and everything that ha could happen for the Avalanche with 23 games now left to go. Talking with players the last few days, uh, what, do you, what sense are you getting about this home stretch for Colorado? Well, they're not just the home stretch, Mike. What you get is a real excitement in the locker room about what's next. They have got some extraordinarily big games coming up against really good teams. They play. They got a, 23 games remaining. A lot of them are against the best clubs in the league: uh, St. Louis, Chicago, San Jose. Uh, Pittsburgh and Boston from the Bees both come into this building. So I think the players are really excited to see, you know, what are we? How good are we? Can we play with these guys? Because a lot of those clubs are Stanley Cup tested and Stanley Cup proven hockey clubs. Well, you think about it, Peter, and you go, earlier this season, the Avalanche went to Boston, went to Pittsburgh, got wins there, and beaten Chicago this season. But now you're, now you're into the tougher part of the season where those veteran teams know how to win games and it'll be interesting to see how you play against those clubs at this point in the season rather than earlier. Centering pass goes all the way back to the point. McCulloch shot stopped by Barlama. Rebound and that one trickled wide. Back into the corner. Ripped around the wall and out to center rice. Four shots for the Avs and now two on net for the Phoenix Coyotes. It was their first shot since the 6.59 here in this first period of play. Handled by Tyson Perry. Had perhaps the best scoring chance of the game for either team. Carried in by Yandel. He's in. He shoots and he snapped that puck wide. Well, he walked right in. There's a chance for Barrow. Spins behind the net. Looking to make a play centers. Smacked back towards the corner. Portolo Tipped the puck to center ice. Back it up. Morris will slide it across for Yandel to take. Into the middle circle, and Borlo, he just steamrolled right over Brandon McMillan. Got across. Morris sends a BB in wide of the net. Bouncing puck, scoops across in the Colorado zone. 12 minutes remaining in the period. No score. Coyotes with possession in their own zone. Pass wobbling across the rink. And Bodger will carry in down the wing into the Colorado zone, trying to get wide around Ginnett. Comes out of the corner, plays it back to the point. Shot by Stone. He missed the net. And McKinnon. Nice move. He frees himself and gets out to center right. What a move. Shot in. Stick safe. Rebound. Tipped and wide of the net. Great chance there by McKinnon. Back to the point. Shot by Holden. Gets blocked. Back to Holden again. Another shot gets blocked. Deflected to the corner. Avalanche are on it. Landeskog moving high in the slot. Flipped it across. Holden with another chance. And that one missed the net. Back along the wing. Taken and pushed out towards center ice by the Coyotes. Right in front of Peter McNabb. The puck is shut in around the board. Hayden will take it behind the net. Good shift by Stasty's line. They're, you know, they're, they're, I think for Landeskog and Stasty, they're, they're really adjusting to the speed of McKinnon and using it to their advantage and creating a lot of good chances. Peter, I know you down right between the benches, tough angle, but were you able to get a good look at that move that McKinnon made in his own zone to get free? No, all I heard was the ooh. Uh, <laughs> I figured something happened. <laughs> it was remarkable. Coyotes with a puck in the AM zone. Shot comes wide of the net. Taken off the backboard by Talbot. He gets chopped away from the puck. And crash along the boards. Freeze up the puck. Boss tipped it ahead. Boss with it. The half board shot right on the glove save made by Barlamov. 
Well, for Phoenix, they have to feel pretty good. You know, this, this is the kind of game with the avalanche speed and their skill. That you, when you played last night, Mike, you can prepare, you can do everything you want, but your legs aren't going to quite be there. But here McKinnon just flying. Nice pass by Stastny. But I think, you know, I think at this point, Phoenix just you know, 10 minutes into it, relaxing, getting into the game for the Avalanche. You just want to keep pushing that pace. Keep moving, Mike. Th and that's the one thing the Avalanche have kept saying all season long. They want every segment of the season to be faster and faster. They want to be a better passing club all the time. Try and do that against a team that last night had to play in Winnipeg and come through customs. Long night for the Coyotes to get back here in Denver for tonight's game. Let's take a look at who is in the groove. This is presented by Groove Subaru and Nathan McKinnon. Boy, has he been great since the start of this calendar year. Mike, you and I have been lucky enough to watch the, the, sort of the growth of McKinnon. All you have to do is look at the names on that list. And you realize that he's right in there. And, you know, you, you look at it and he has just, you know, he's starting to, that confidence is there every night. It's just, it's just been fun to watch. Race to the puck, Morris back for the Coyotes. Cleaned up the boards, Fleish has it against the near wall. Chipped away from him. Chased down behind the net, Morris makes a nice play to free up the puck. Got it up by Halper. Lead pass through the center circle over the line. Pass to the near side for Moss. He's squeezed against the boards by Benoit, who tonight playing in his 100th game for the National Hockey League. Turned around the boards, chipped out to center ice. Quick snap pass across for Stone, reaching the red line, hammered around, puck circles the board, scooped up in the far circle, shot saved by Barlamov, and the crash to the front of the net, thwarted by O'Reilly, and he gets his stick check. Doan turns and shoots, save, rebound, right in the low slot, turned away by Duchesne, then the pass to center for O'Reilly. He's coming wide down the near wing, pass into the middle for Duchesne. They got tipped away. Ribeiro comes the other way. Meanwhile, there's an injured Phoenix Coyote player back in the Phoenix zone. There's going to be a penalty as well. And as the Avs touch the puck, we do get the whistle. So there's the injured player, Brandon McMillan. And we'll come back. Phoenix will have a power play in a scoreless first period. And welcome back to the Pepsi Center. Still scoreless between the Avs and Phoenix. A big congratulations to the DU Junior Pioneers for winning the 55th annual International Quebec Pee Wee Tournament. And they were just honored here right at the Pepsi Center. As you can see, that is when they won the final game. They won four games. They went on a run to win this tournament, a tournament very prestigious that 110 teams from 14 countries play. It's the second year the Colorado Avalanche's representatives have won the tournament. So that's pretty awesome news, guys. Boy, is it that impressive. Congratulations to all that. What an accomplishment. Well, there's a power play happening right now. All alone in front of backhand try. Hansel. A penalty has been called on P.A. Parento, a cross-checking penalty at 11-10 has given the Coyotes their first power play. And Peter, this is a pretty good power play team, the Phoenix Coyotes. Yeah, they have 42 goals in the season, six more than the Avalanche. And one of the guys to watch is Yendo. And, and if, like I was just about to say before this, this whole power play started for the Phoenix Coyotes, if there's one guy that right now, Yendel has some jump. He has been up in the play, he's been reading the play. He is a very, very interesting defenseman to watch for this Phoenix club. He's one of those players, like Eric Johnson, unbelievably disappointed they didn't make Team USA. He's got 31 assists yeah. this season. He has the puck. And he is moving. He shoots. Knocked down in front. Tap back behind the net. And cleared out by Andre Benoit. He's touched with a high stick. So Ekman Larson, as he comes back, he'll touch it, and that brings the whistle. And a face-off coming back. Yeah, here he's Keith again. Surprisingly, Mike, and you never know. You just you just don't have any idea for sure. But his name keeps coming up every once in a while as far as trades. I mean, he would he would bring a lot if the Phoenix Coyotes were to decide to decide because you just don't find guys that have this kind of offensive magic. I mean, he he is against the Avalanche. You know, Phoenix always played well against the Avalanche, but Yandel's been one of those guys that's really been a key. Well, that's a lot of points in the power play. Quarterback a power play. 
It goes a long way towards dunking your club, and he's certainly done the job this season for Met on top of the puck. Get it. Trying to reach for it, and the puck is swatted out by the Avalanche. Well, the Avalanche really do swarm, don't they? On when they're killing the penalties. They have four they're guys. On hurry, the, oh, they? there's four guys in the far side. Now the far guy is open on the point, but they are just on the puck so quickly you can't get it across. Pass comes back to the point. Ekman Larson dancing along the blue line. Finds Mikhail Botker. Twisted back towards Ekman Larson. Pass down low for Botker. His pass in front, off the skate, back for Botker, to the point for Ekman Larson. He finds Botker again inside the circle. Turns, shot off the post, we got scored by Shane Doan. It went off the post, and then Doan able to backhand it in for his 16th goal of the season. Seventh on the power play. And you can see the look of Patrick Law's face as his team is down one nothing to the Coyotes. Well, we had a pretty good look at why this power play is so good for the Phoenix Coyotes. You got Ekman Larson and Yandel as your two point men. Both of them can make the play on either side of the ice. They can open things up. Nice play right there. Stone, who's always been spiked so good against the Avalanche, but he's just a big, strong guy. Don't now, in his 18th year in the National Hockey League, he's been a 10 year captain of this Phoenix club, and he just keeps playing. Hard top box. The Coyotes get the first goal. They lead this one 1 0. O'Reilly's pass through the middle. Knocked down by Barry to give to Duchesne. Dropped the puck in the corner. O'Reilly behind the net. Parento centers. That got blocked. Parento again with the puck. He's pushed. Slumpko behind the net to Halpern. Spun around the boards. Dropped along to the half boards. Avalanche trying to get possession of the Phoenix zone. Duchesne, nice pass. O'Reilly shot off the side of the net after it was deflected by Grice. Played back towards the point. Barry with it. Sends the puck across. Caught on the skate by Holden. Gives it back to Barry. And backhanded around. And behind the net. Kicked away by Duchesne. Then batted by Parento. Halpern takes it for the Coyotes. Turned it around the boards. Tipped by Moss, he gets the puck to center ice. Barry to the red line. Shot around the boards. Circles to the near side. Landeskog puts a hit along the near side, but puck still controlled by Stone. Pass comes out in the center ice. Carried in by the Coyotes on the drop. Followed by Ekman Larson. Dropped it behind the net for Hansel. Gives to uh, for a bottom. His shot goes wide of the net. Carried towards center by McKinnon. Got to spin back into his own zone. Cross ice pass comes to Benoit through the middle. Bounced away from Landeskog. Verbata sends the puck into his own zone. And it's handled there by McCulloch. Five and a half to go in our first period. One nothing in favor of the Phoenix Coyotes. Shane Doan with a power play goal. Pass comes over to Verbata. Centered in front. Tips on net. Verbata gets the rebound. Circles, turns, and shoots. Bob off. Made the save. And he was fortunate that that puck on that rebound scooped away. He made a terrific save to get across. Yeah, the Phoenix the Coyotes right now are, are really playing well. They're skating, moving, but now Mike, the yeah, get a power play. Yep, another penalty is called. Earlier, the Phoenix Coyotes took advantage of an avalanche penalty and scored on the power play. It's 1-0 Coyotes. Shane Doan with a power play goal here in the first. Time for Did You Know, presented by Stevenson Automotive. Here's tonight's question. Who was the last rookie to have a 10-game scoring streak in the National Hockey League? Was it C1, Jonathan Taves, C2, Patrick Kane, or C3, Sidney Crosby? You can text your answer to 53548. Well, I, you know what? Any of those three guesses would probably be a pretty good guess, wouldn't it? I was going to say, it's pretty good company. You yeah. know, I think we, over the years we've learned to appreciate when you when you do something and you include yourself in the company of one of those three guys like Nathan McKinnon would do if you were to get a point tonight. That's impressive stuff. All right, so the power play for the Avalanche. Mike Ribeiro, a hooking penalty at 14.57. There's a chance for Holden, and he snuck in from the point. Play back to the near side. Parento into the far circle. Scooped in front. Holden winds. Makes the pass for Parento in the slot. And that one got away from McGinn out in the center. The F score of the power play. A lucky winner will get tickets to an upcoming game. For a chance to win, register at afwonline.com slash altitude. 
Avalanche working the puck around, getting some shots here on this power play. Trailing one nothing. Shot by Parento. Score! That was a sweet shot from high and top. In the slot, Parento with the goal. Ring it off the iron and a pair of power play goals in this first period and we're tied up at one. Well, Holden had a chance earlier. Now Parento, his point partner on this power play unit for the Avalanche. And as they always do, Mike, the first thing the Avalanche practiced this morning was the power play. And were they zipping that puck around this morning? It comes on the heels of the kind of success and confidence you built off a three power play game against the LA Kings. That's now four and three games for the Avalanche. And center, Ben Wild with the puck, circling wide. So Parento on the power play. That's his 12th goal of the season, and that's his first power play goal of the season. Shot dribbling to the net by Mitchell. Kicked away. Rice has lost the goaltender stick. So to his right, you can see Mitchell skating, and the puck ran right into the stick. Mitchell skates through it. Back to the point, Benoit shot, goes wide to the net. Yandel takes the puck for the Coyotes. Has a vice, tipped in. The Avalanche have possession. Sarge, pass from Landeskog. Threads it through. When it comes to Ekman Larson over to Doan. Doan and Parento with the power play goals. Parento. This from Duchesne and O'Reilly, 15-38. Stanton, pass off the boards, didn't get it out of the zone. Finally scooped out the center by the defenseman, Corey Sarge. Landis Scott dragging the puck along the boards. Battle with McCulloch. Up the near side wall, knocked down. Kicked off of Doan out the center, but McKinnon first to the puck for the Avalanche. 2.45 remaining in the period, one-to-one -one game. Nice pass comes through, behind for Landis Scott. Has to reach back for the puck, and his pass intercepted by McCulloch. A vice for Vermette. Coyotes into the ab zone, shot tipped high. Around the wall, the puck goes. Then out the center with the backhand by McKinnon, chased back by Ekman Larson, the Coyotes. Quick snap pass ahead, off the skate of Bodger, down the slot. Vermette couldn't stick handle by Hayda. Parento gets the puck for the Avalanche. Off of O'Reilly to center ice. Smashed ahead by Klemko. And the puck lifted to the red line. O'Reilly's got it to Colorado. Turns the puck around the boards. Parento waiting in the corner, squeezed against the boards. And the puck comes straight. One handed back behind the net. Klemko's quick head man pass out to center ice. Goes it through the neutral zone. Smashed back out to center ice. Backhanded off the wall. Brought in. Drop pass for Halford. Cutting across. He shoots. Had a block. Gets the goal rebound. Another chance gets deflected wide. Halford walks out in front of the net. Couldn't pull the trigger on a shot. Avalanche Parento. Moves the pass across for O'Reilly. He gets checked by Morris. Held up against the wall. Pass deflected by McGinn towards Grice. He'll steer the puck to Yandel. Out to center ice. Flag down. And lifted ahead by O'Reilly. Off the glove of Yandel with 1.15 remaining in our first period. Game tied at one. Long pass through center. Put in by McMillan. Drops the puck to the corner. Drive same time as Talbot. They tangle up in the corner. Pushed out in front. Shot down low. There's a chance. Oh, golden opportunity missed there by Rivera. There in the center ice, Talbot. Skates the red line. Trying to step around the defenseman to call it. Dropped the puck in the corner. We're in the last minute of the period. Avalanche had the puck. Mitchell with a chance. Had it blocked. There to center ice by Rivera. Skates in over the line. Makes the pass. The Avalanche tie up their men. And then Mitchell takes the, takes the puck. Pass ahead for McGinn. Backhanded in. With 30 seconds to go in the period. And Mike, we've, we've done a few of these games where I've been down at ice level. And you don't want to overstate things, but this is a 
Daphne cutting in, backhand and goes through the crease and wide. But you can feel just how desperate Phoenix is. I mean, they're, they are desperate to get back in that playoff picture. They picked up a point last night, but a shootout loss in Winnipeg. And Varlamov makes a save with ten and a half minutes, ten and a half seconds, excuse me, to go in our first period. You know, and, and Michael, my point being that things that were maybe a, a bigger factor in the first period was that just off the side of the net, like playing back-to-back -back games. Teams are, can't, will not use that as an excuse anymore. You've got to be ready for these games. You're down to 23 games left in the season, 24-23 for most clubs. You got to be ready every night. It doesn't matter if you played last night or that night, you know, that night before. Final 10 seconds tick away. Coyotes outshot the Avs 13 to 10, but boy, the Avs did a nice job, Peter. Did they responding after that Coyotes power play with one of their own? Yeah, and there's that's the key. That if you score a power play, get a power play goal against you, you come back on your first power play and you score. There's a confidence that that builds. And that's as we mentioned, Mike. Four and two games now for the Avalanche. Four and four periods for the Avalanche on that power play. You gotta love Parento with his first power play goal of the season, assisted by Matt Duchesne and Ryan O'Reilly. That was right after Shane Doan's power play goal for Phoenix. So our score is 1-1 at the end of one. Stay tuned for the Toyota Intermission Report. Phoenix and Colorado exchanged power play goals in the first 20 minutes of play. Shane Doan for Phoenix and the PA Parento scoring for the Colorado Avalanche. 1-1 our score as we head towards the second period of play. March 5th, next Wednesday, while well, the Avalanche have an off day in Detroit, getting ready for the Red Wing game on Thursday, Peter. That'll be the trade deadline day, but already a big domino fell to perhaps start the trades here earlier tonight when the St. Louis Blues and the Buffalo Sabres exchanged goaltenders and some other players involved as well. Yeah, a lot of pieces involved in this trade. And, you know, you, if you're the Colorado Avalanche, Mike, this, you have to talk about this trade because St. Louis is in the central division, the division that you're in. And Ryan Miller, only 33. And, Mike, he is a great goaltender. And you, you, you look at it, and he goes St. Louis, third in the league right now as far as best defensive club. Why would they possibly trade for a goaltender? Their goaltender numbers have been real good over the course of the last couple of years. But, Mike, you and I have gone to, to St. Louis. There was always the idea that they were just not completely confident with their goaltender. It, you know, it wasn't something you could actually put your finger on as far as numbers, but they really feel in doing this, they have upgraded the confidence in their goaltender, and there is no question that Miller on his game is a game changer as far as a playoff series. Peter, for Avalanche fans, their thought is there's a team in the division, the St. Louis Blues, who made a big trade. Do the Avalanche need or want to do something to match that? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Any trade you ever make where you're trying to either keep a player away from a team or keep up with a team never turns out to be a good deal. No, you stay the course. It's interesting, no question about it. Well, the Avalanche certainly have shown that they are happy with their goaltender. They signed Semyon Varlamov not that long ago to a five-year extension. So they certainly feel comfortable in that area, don't they? Oh, absolutely. I mean, he, they have their number one guy. There's no question about that. We have resumed play, second period, game tied at one. Each team with a power play goal during the first period. Scott in the slot for McKinnon. His shot gets blocked, comes back to him, gets tipped past him, and out to center ice. Benoit scored a power play goal on Wednesday against Los Angeles. His first power play goal of the season. Over to Sarch, back to Benoit. He'll skate to center. Pass tipped towards Stastny. Turns and backhands it into the Phoenix zone. Right. Spin it around the boards. Ekman Larson reversed it back behind McCauley. Dropped it back for Ekman Larson to take. Just starting things in the second period. Tied at one. The Avalanche and the Phoenix Coyotes have already played a couple of games. The Avalanche are one and one this season against Phoenix. A chance down low is saved by Grice. And he holds the puck as the Avs crash the net trying to get it in. As, uh, and as he always does, First whistle, Matt Sokolowski rolls the water bottle down to Semyon Varlamov right in front of us. But m there was a couple guys on the bench that started to cheer. Duchesne right there. The puck looked like it was going to sneak in five hole, but it just didn't get in behind Grice.
who, as you mentioned earlier, Mike, has always played well against the Avalanche. 4 0. And the goals against Avalanche are 1.25. The previous four games against Colorado, including a win this season. And the Phoenix Coyote, goaltender. Pass behind the net by Tyson Berry. And fired up ice off of McLeod. Looks like an icing call. Yeah, there's the whistle. Icing indeed called on the Avalanche. Well, let's have a look at this Western Conference. And of course, you look at the Avalanche right now, they're sitting eight points ahead of Minnesota. They have a game in hand over the Minnesota Wild. On the other side of it, LA has won a couple of games since the Olympic break. And, you know, they've separated themselves a little bit, but there is a pack right around that 66 number for Dallas. A couple of clubs, 65, and 64, and 62. Like, those are the clubs who think, are they going to be compelled to try to get a little bit better, just that one player better? And who is that one player? Okay, who can make it? Who's available? They can make a difference. Well, there's some players available. There's, there's just no question. But there's a huge name out there. And, I mean, Vanek, obviously, of the Islanders. I mean, he's not going to turn down the money that they offered him. But he is going to be available to somebody. Is he the number one forward? Yeah. They, he, but at, at point this, producer, if you will. He, he appears to be that number one name that people call about. Pass in front. Returned back by Doan in the slot. Shot and Varloma. Look how far he came out. What a save. Back to the point. Slid across. Klemko returns the pass. Shot up high. Around the glass. Drops to the near side. Ribeiro put it behind the net. Centering try. Ribeiro takes it from behind the cage. Slides it back. Slemko dishes off, shot gets tipped, and up into the screen, the puck has gone out of play. You know, it, it's interesting, Mike, you're watching different teams have different sort of styles, and this is just Varlamov as he makes a, just a terrific save. And again, the aggressive nature of his play this year, he just moves right out, he just takes everything away. But just watch as the game goes on and see if it does play out. The Phoenix Coyotes three times in that, I watched twice in the first period, once right there, the defenseman throwing the puck high, wristing it high, maybe countering the fact that Varlamov gets so low, they're trying to get one up over the shoulders. Not the big slap shot, you know, that, you know, that we normally see, just a, a good wrist shot from the point, but they're aiming for the top corners. But you saw, Peter, as you pointed out as well, the, that aggress when he comes out like that, what, there's nowhere to shoot. There are five Avalanche players behind him. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't, truly don't that's, see that too often. That's a great aggressive goaltending. Terrific save. Out to center ice. Mitchell to the red line. Shot around the boards into the Phoenix zone. Loose for Mitchell. Centering try, but it was behind Talbot. There to center by Verbata. Floats the puck in wide from behind the net. Freed up by Klinkhammer. Kicks the puck along the end boards, back towards the point. Down low, bounced off the end boards, four for Vada. Shot to the net, steered wide with the stick by Varlamov. Shot that by Benoit, but it's cut off by the Coyotes. Turned back up the boards, and Ekman Larson's got to go to the neutral zone to retrieve the puck. Just the pass over to Morris, a vice for Antoine Vermette, back in the end to the Avalanche zone. Going shoulder to shoulder with Benoit. Botker comes along the boards. Pass one back towards the point for Morris. Slings it across. Yandel's pass picked off O'Reilly in a great spot. Pass up ice for Parento. Have stay on side. Shot off the right. Rebound. Tip to the corner. Morris has got it. Pass comes back across. Yandel down the far side for Botker. Cutting in. He shoots. On goal save made by Barlamov. Handled across. Shot by Stone. Missed. Shot. Whoa! And did Barlamov get across the post in a hurry? Tip back behind the net. Tipped out in front into the circle. O'Reilly hand off to Duchesne. Speed up, and he's knocked down by Schlemko. That'll be a penalty. Interference. Duchesne had pushed the puck up the boards, tried to get around the Phoenix Coyote player, and then was knocked down. Phoenix, number six, to me, my interference. I, I, there, there's the penalty right there. Duchesne trying to use the speed to go to the outside. But I was just watching Varlamov talk with athletic trainer Matt Sokolowski, Mike, and 
Matt is leaving now to go into the back room, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Power play again for the Avalanche, second of the game. And they have scored a power play goal. Parento, his first power play goal of the season, came at 15-38 back in the first period. Rolling puck wide to the left of Varlamov. He'll set it. The Avalanche will break out again. Schlemko called for interference at 425. Pass to the blue line, picked off by Ekman Larson. And the Phoenix defender will shoot the puck back into the Colorado zone. Pass comes to McKinnon to the red line. Knight to the corner. McCullough arrives there for Phoenix. So does Landeskog. Avalanche have the puck. Stastny back into the round for Benoit. Pass across for Barry. Dropped it off for Landeskog. Back to the point for Benoit. Far side circle in the slot. Landeskog shot and it went off the blocker of Grice. Well, it was in a great spot for that one. Cross for Barry. Moving in, protects the puck. 40. Eight seconds left in the penalty. Barry tees it up. His shot deflects. Goes off the glass. Ekman Larson rolls it around the boards and got the puck out of the zone. Well, Lomoff will set it behind the net. 30 seconds left in Schlemko's penalty. Parento gains the line. Gets checked. Pushes the puck towards the corner for O'Reilly. A couple of Phoenix players on him, but the pass goes back for Parento to Duchesne, skates the circle, back into the cross, for Holt, back behind the net, intended for Duchesne, tipped away, O'Reilly's got it, flipped it high in the slot for Parento, over towards O'Reilly, few seconds left to go, Avalanche had one shot on net, shot by Parento, tipped wide of the net, O'Reilly dipped it out in front, and it's covered by Grice, just as the penalty had expired. The Avalanche did a lot of things right, but just didn't score a goal. It's still tied at one. Game tied at one. Let's go down to the Avalanche bench. Peter McNabb set to interview Andre Benoit. Peter? Well, first of all, congratulations on 100 games in the National Hockey League. Well done. Thank you. But more importantly, I think, for the, for the Avalanche, the power play has been working so well. What's been the key to the success of the power play? Yeah, I think uh, putting putts on net and getting bodies there, like a first goal, PA's goal, is a good screen, and I think that's how uh, that's how you score a goal, good putt movements, and then putts and bodies to net. Right, thanks so much, appreciate it. Congratulations again. Face off in the, the Phoenix zone. Game still tied, we're 1-1 here in the second. Slammed off the boards by the Coyotes, blocked. Avalanche, Max Talbot, charges to the side of the net. Wedged away from the puck by Ekman Larsman. Mitchell follows. His pass to McGinn. Catch it across for Barry. Cuts right in and sweeping across. The puck knocked down. Sent back towards the high slot. Mitchell going to hold the puck into the nice job with some pressure. Skates free down the slot. Shot saved. Made by Grice. And the rebound tossed into the corner. Lifted away by Ekman Larson. Center ice. Fair catch made there by Gennon. Then slapped back around the boards in the Phoenix zone. Talbot dropped it off. Diving forward, it's tipped wide of the net by McGinn. Mitchell takes the puck. It's been a very interesting shift from this line. Like they, they give you such an honest effort. Mitchell, McGinn, and Talbot. Picked off by McCulloch. Phoenix trying to clear. And hold at the blue line. Nice play to keep it in. The Avs need to make a line change. That'll give some time behind the net for the Coyotes to try to get something happening. Shot around by McCulloch. Tipped down the ice. Back into the Colorado zone. Back to get the puck, Nick Holden. Stastny, a vice Ribeiro. His pass picked off. Lana Scott receives a pass from Stastny. Skates in, both Jets, but McKinnon following. Smashes the puck down the board, blocked by Morris. Kick back out to center ice. Lana Scott gets the puck just outside the blue line. Makes a pass through the neutral zone for Holden. He has defense, shoots it in to the Coyote zone. Morris on it for the Coyotes to McMillan. He'll skate to center to the red line. Shot in. Barlamov waiting behind the net. He'll feed it across for Benoit to take. Pass. Got away from Doan. Comes across for Sarge. He's got a little time. 
finds Benoit in the pass out to center ice. McLeod's in. He shoots wide of the Phoenix net. Chased down by Cleach. First the puck around. Bordalo dishes off behind the net for McLeod. He twists away from Handel. Drops the puck back behind the net for Cleach to take. He finds Bordalo still behind the Phoenix net. Skates into the corner. The big winger for the Avalanche. Puts the puck up the wall. Tag there. The puck freed up and sent out to center. Shot across. Benoit takes it right from the Phoenix bench. His pass kicked away by Handel, but scooped up by Bordalo. Uses that long reach to get free, and then backhands the puck deep into the Phoenix zone. Another good shift here by this line. Bordalo with a nice hit. Got a reaction from the crowd as the Coyotes ice the puck. Luxury has an address. Cody Lexus invites you to see the full line of Lexus all-weather drive sedans and luxury utility vehicles for 2014. Available at Cooney Lexus of Greenwood Village and Colorado Springs. Time out, Phoenix. Well, Phoenix taking their time at their timeout gives them Mike an opportunity to talk about Andre Benoit. Mike, you know what the surprising thing is, and and it almost felt bad congratulating for 100 games. It, it should be 500 games by now. You know how he, at age 30, is just playing his 100th game in this league is just seems impossible when you see how he has played for the Avalanche this year, how he played for Ottawa the last part of the year. But it also just shows you that, you know, there are players that will slip through the cracks, and he's been unbelievable numbers in junior. Unbelievable numbers in the minors. Everywhere he went, they won. So you know players were, I mean, scouts were watching him. He was just one of those guys. He got pigeonholed early that he was too small. He's proven, obviously, that that's not the case. He's got three goals, 18 assists, 21 points for the Avalanche this year. And he's been part of the resurgent Avalanche defensive pool. So, uh, you know, and it's just nice to see a guy finally get his opportunity and capitalize as he has. He certainly has gotten that chance with the Avalanche. The Avalanche has a better team for it. Klemko moves the puck to the corner. Parentos pass intercepted. Slapped off the board towards the Avalanche zone. Rabada tipped the puck ahead. Parento will come back and get it. Back in the first period, a power play goal from Shane Doan at 12.47. Then... B.A. Parento also on a power play opportunity. That time for the Avalanche, 15-38 to tie the game up at one. And we're still knotted up here in the second period. With 10 minutes to go, we are halfway through regulation. Nice move by Duchesne over the line. Barry getting down the wing. Pass behind the net. Back for Duchesne to Tyson Barry. Down the boards for Duchesne. Gets checked. Alfred spins the puck around. Cross ice pass. Received and brought through by Secure. Down the slot for Yandel. Great pass. Shot and stopped by Varlamov. Great look at play by the Coyotes and a beautiful save by Varlamov. Ribeiro skates free. Down the slot. Poke check but followed by Doan. His pass blocked. Back to Doan. Over skates the puck. Tipped away. Carried to center ice by McGinn. He's got Mitchell with him. Push the puck ahead towards the corner. Both teams crash into the corner. Nine minutes left in the period. Pass ahead for McMillan. He gets checked. And Mitchell for Colorado has the puck. Back every in game, it in. Every game here. Mike takes on a personality. Last game against L.A. You could feel the goals were just going to keep coming. It just had that feel. Now, after a start where I thought, okay, we may see some goals again, it is really now hard work through that neutral zone. Both clubs doing a great job defensively. Brought by McKinnon to the Phoenix zone. The puck back, Benoit shot. Flex off the body and goes wide. Pass up by Fodker. Offside pass. 1-1. One, one. Moments ago, Phoenix, great passing play. Varlamov, big time save. All right, let's take a look at tonight's scores light. Cold, hard, facts. Well, you look at the two guys that are ahead. Well, Simeon Varlamov and victories, what have they both done? They both won Stanley Cups. Miami with the Chicago Blackhawks and Fleury with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Varlamov, like we, you and I talked about it before the game, he's been their MVP to this point. There's not much question about that. And if he could get to 
40 wins. That would be 12 more wins. That would absolutely guarantee the Avalanche would have that, if, if not higher, at least that third spot in that central division. It is such a tough division. Out at center ice, puck popped back in. Well, it's gotten a little tougher as well, Peter, with the Winnipeg Jets after they made their coaching change. Well, they have played really well. Can't, They're yeah. still hoping they can make a nice run. Oh, absolutely. They're 10-3-1. You look at the clubs, aside from Chicago and St. Louis, you look at the clubs in the West, in the pardon me, Central Division, like the last 10 games, Winnipeg 6-3-1. Dallas, who is just, they're flying 7-1-2. Minnie's 6-2-2. Nashville quietly 5-2-3. So no more than three losses in the last 10 games for any of the clubs. The Rose Cup's right in behind the ass. So here you talk about what kind of effect the Olympics have. Parento's shot comes wide. How good is Jimmy Benn feel about his game right now? Played a goal and two assists in his first yeah. game back. He, you know, it's one of those things that just always seems that the Olympics create a monster on some team, whether it be Canada or whatever. And Jamie Benn looks like he may be that guy. Yep. Well, good to see Corey Sarch back. He had oh, missed yeah. 13 games with a back injury, returned and played the game against Los Angeles on Wednesday and still in the lineup for the F. That's great news. And he brings that experience. There's no question about it. He has played the most playoff games of any Avalanche player by a mile. But more importantly for him, those 17 games that the Olympic break, Mike, were probably would have meant seven, eight games, more than he would have missed. So he ended up only missing 13 instead of 21-22. Face off in the Coyote zone. Phoenix with possession. Link Hammer to center. Puts the puck across to the blue line. Sarge sends it through the neutral zone. Stepping up. Benoit rims it around. Link Hammer checked by Parento. Delivers the puck to the corner. And the pass sizzles down the ice. And it'll be icing on Phoenix with 7.14 still to go. In our second period, American Furniture Warehouse and the Avs have teamed up to bring you the ultimate flyaway sweepstakes, where a winner and their guest will be flown to Canada to see the Avs take on the Montreal Canadiens on March 18th. You can register to win online at coloradoavalanche.com. Well, it won't be quite the zoo, like that it was when Patrick Roth returned for the first time as a player. But there'll be some of the animals will be out in the Montreal Canadian press too, I guarantee you. It's good. It'll still be nutty. Jammed at by Bordolo, and it stopped right at the post by Grice. But Bordolo had a few whacks at that one, just couldn't push it in. Well, this was interesting. Like, this was an icing by Phoenix, and they had some tired bodies. And Patrick Waugh comes right out with Cliche's line. They've played well tonight. They've been banging bodies. But it's, it's, it's to, that continuous pressure. And they stay out now after this whistle. So Patrick Waugh obviously liking what this line is doing. Up the boards, blocked by Bordalo. Makes a nice pass draw. Shot by Cleese, saved by Greg. Rebound behind the net. Swung around the boards. Out in by Barry. Back behind the net. Kept in momentarily by the Avs. Another good shift by the Cleach line. Broken stick as Schlemko as he makes the pass. A vice for Halford. Backhanded behind the net. Turned up the wall. McLeod makes a handoff. Mitchell pass in the middle for Barry. Broken up by the Coyotes. And Phoenix will get to the puck. There to center, Ekman Larson, his pass. For Doan, he gets checked in the game over the line by Holden. Puts the puck behind the net. Turned around the wall. Freed up by Talbot, lifted out to center. Ekman Larson got it again for the Coyotes. The puck in. Reverse back behind the net. Holden, backhands it up for Mitchell. Hipped in by Ekman Larson and shot off the chest of Barlava. Back to the point, held in by McCulloch. Got it one. 
Neither team has been able to score in the second period as the puck flies out of play. 1-1 in the second in Denver. Well, we talked about the Avalanche schedule and the fact that after tonight, 22 games remaining. And one of the parts that's really interesting, and the Avalanche are going to learn an awful lot about themselves, these are the top six clubs in the NHL aside from the Avalanche. And the Avalanche, in the 22 games remaining after tonight, Mike, they got Anaheim home and away, San Jose home and away, Chicago home and away, St. Louis home and away, Pittsburgh here, Boston here. So, I mean, they are going to, they're up against the very best. All of those six clubs absolutely believe that they're in that Stanley Cup hunt. So you know the Avalanche, those are going to be great games to watch. Phoenix penalty, number 63, Mike Romero, two minutes, four months. Well, there's a penalty that has been called on the Phoenix Coyotes, Mike Romero. It's the minor penalty, so it's another power play chance for the Avs, who are one for two in this game. An unsportsmanlike conduct call at 14-22. Hold on, Romero. Power play for the Avs. Parenteau has the power play goal in this game for Colorado. This is off for Duchesne. Rich shot. Boy, he snapped that one. But it went up high. Holding his pass. Flex off of David Moss to center. Parenteau plays the puck across. But past Duchesne. McGinn's got it. But a penalty. And they're going to call McGinn for a hook as he went for that puck. Pulled Ekman Larson away using his stick. And he's going to the penalty box. Colorado number 11, two minute minor hook. Uh, and negates the power play, gives him a four on four. And again, the thing you always watch in these plays, watch the hands. If the stick gets in on the hands, they are automatically going to call it. It's not one of those plays where, you know, it looks like that bad, but it did cause a turnover. But, he, you know, when you get it in on the hands, the referees will make that call, and that's just the way that it is. After the draw, the puck pushed across from Landeskog. Steve to the line. Pass up by for Doan. Behind him, Yandel. Skates into the line. He shoots, and Valama will catch that puck and hold it for a faceoff. Yeah, we're going four on four here. See how the Avalanche come. Oh, boy. The Avalanche are throwing their speed. They threw, you know, Stastny. And Landis got about as smart a combination as the Avalanche have as far as two guys you're going to put on the ice at the same time. Now you come with that ultra speed. You come with McKinnon and Duchesne in the same pair. And for Phoenix, it's hands off for Bata as forwards. And you get Morris and Yandel their defense. Sarge, nothing with Holden on defense for the Avalanche. Feeds the puck to Duchesne. Sprints in, cuts in, his backhander deflected by Yandel. And then Duchesne hustles to get to the puck. Morris, tag him along the boards, does so. Handle, finds Yandel. And the puck comes to Morris. He winds, his shot, his skate, and then Holden knocking down Hansel. Meanwhile, McKinnon eludes a handle, makes the pass for Duchesne in the slot for Starch. There's a delayed penalty on the Coyotes coming up. There's the whistle. And the Avalanche, 13 seconds left in Ribeiro's penalty, 58 seconds to go in McGinn's, and that rare four on three power play opportunity coming up. I think, I think it's Ribeiro. He's in, he, he, I think he got tossed. He, he must have continued. But, but Peter, there had to be a... Why would they stop the play? Uh, if they're, be, if they're not calling more, a minor penalty. They, there's got to be more than that. Cause they, yeah, right? Because they, they, the, they stopped the play. Right. And the referee had his arm on. Now there are four skaters out there right now for the Coyotes. It, it, it is it is not a two minutes, a ten minute misconduct. Uh, 
Well, it, it appeared to happen as the referee was skating by the box. Rivero was continuing to have a conversation. So we continue four on four, but Rivero replaced the box by Bodker. It is a 10-minute misconduct penalty called on Rivero. So we will stay four on four. Pass comes across into the corner, back towards the point, then across for Yandel in the slot. Ekman Larson's pass picked off by Talbot. Talbot's pass back in front for Cleese, deflected away in the Coyotes' head. What a nice play by Vermette coming back. That was a two on one that he was able to get back with speed and hustle. Vodka had been turned in minor. He'll leap back, can't try by Don't stop, kicked around in the crease. And it kicks back towards the far side wall. Yandel gets the pass. One timer save made by Varlamov. And he holds the puck. Oh, there are a couple of dangerous plays there around the Avalanche net. That, you know, that is such a hard play for a goaltender to read because the puck is just bouncing around. It bounces off the skate, then it comes forward. You're just, you can't, you don't know how to play it. Here is the play where the referee says, just, just says to Rivera, get out of here. You're gone for 10 minutes. Must have used the magic word, right? There's a couple of them. That he's... <laughs> you don't really like them. It's, they're, they're, they're... And that's the end of the uh, power play situations. We're back to five on five. The Avalanche now one for three in this game. The Coyotes one for two on the power play. Scored that power play goal. They're still tied up at one. They scored when we started this period. The now are down to 220 remaining in the second period. Carried through center ice by Verbot. Gets into the Colorado zone. Shift back out to center. Flipped it by Halpern around the boards. Marlomov stretched but couldn't reel in the puck. In the slot, picked up. Shot up high. Dipped out in front of the net. Back towards Morris. His shot. He has a good shot. Misses the net. Yandel going to hold the puck inside the line. But fought off by McGinn. He pushes it ahead for Benoit coming in wide. Shoots on net. Rice makes the save. Backhanded off the boards towards center. Pushed ahead. Morris jumping up in the play. He turned. He shoots. Saved by Varlamov. And a big juicy rebound sent up ice for Parito. Cross to Shane with a chance. Kicked out by Grice. Backhanded ahead. Back into the Colorado zone. Dropped in the corner. Parento has the puck for the Avalanche. Brought in. Shot around the boards by O'Reilly. Continued around by Ekman Larson of the Coyotes. Don't wait. Tipped it off the boards. Getting the puck to center. Ball hit towards the corner. And we move into the final minute of the second period. Tied at one. I got hit a stick just went right over my head into the crowd. Is <laughs> that intended for you? Shot for the point. Tip. Oh, big save. Made by Grice, and then he dives on the loose puck. He just put that left pad out in time. Well, yeah, both clubs right now getting some good opportunities by just hard work. The, the, the defenseman for both teams has done a pretty good job tonight getting that puck through. Like everybody, there's so many players now willing to block shots. You see it right there. Everybody down low and Stastny can't quite find that rebound. Down to 43 seconds remaining in the period. Now the faceoff, Yandel steps up, the Coyote defenseman. Skates through the middle circle, pass across for Chichura. His shot deflected wide of the net. Played back behind. For Moss, turns and shoots. The net moved for a moment, but then dropped right back on the boards. And the puck is lifted out to center ice. Tipped away, off the boards. Blocked at the blue line. 
scramble for the puck in the neutral zone. Chipchura stripped of the puck by Mitchell and the Avs. Come down the last five seconds of the period. Holden will settle back behind the net and run the clock out. Well, we went through 20 minutes of hockey there without a goal being scored, although both teams certainly had some chances. And they had some chances. The goaltending was good. But, you know, you can feel the pressure of this game starting to build. Both clubs, two big points sitting out for this third period. So neither team able to score during the second period. And we are tied at one as we head towards the third period of play. You're watching the Avalanche on Altitude Sports. Stay tuned for the Subaru Intermission Report. Colorado Avalanche Hockey on Altitude is brought to you by Groove Subaru. On Broadway or online at GrooveAuto.com. KeyBank. Unlock your possibilities. Connect for Health Colorado. Your site for exclusive savings on health insurance. Pepsi. Live for now. And by the Ford Explorer. It's time you did your exploring. Ford Explorer, go further. Avalanche and Coyotes have played 40 minutes here in Denver. We're tied at one. And when you got a low scoring game like this, that means the goaltenders are doing something special tonight. And there's been a lot of bodies down low. You see the game plan for both of these clubs is to just put the puck on net and crash down low. It makes it a very physical game. But we've seen all season long. The one thing about Semyon Varlamov, he is very strong and very aggressive. He basically broke through the Avalanche defense to make that last save. There's probably the best save of the game, the biggest save of the game to keep it tied at one. Mike, you almost get the sense, don't you, Mike, that it's going to be a next goal win game. And the Avalanche are going to see a lot of games like this, Mike, where they go into the third period. Last game against L.A., different score, tied at four, but, you know, it, it's a lot of third periods are going to be key. And we're underway in the third period. Coyotes chasing the puck. Hansel shot down the slot, gets blocked by Sark. His pass to center. Hansel reaching for it. McKinnon fights him off. And chips the puck on a bounce so off the blue line, back in. To the Phoenix zone. Turned aside. Remet. He gets hit hard by Landis Scott. That turned over the puck for the Avalanche. Stastny gives to McKinnon, bounce it off the boards. Slides it back, Stastny shot, and might have deflected off the goaltender and went wide. Centered pass in the slot. Shot. Score! <laughs> Mike, it'll be his first of the season, his first with the Avalanche. We were talking with the coaching staff of the Avalanche today. They were just saying how well he has adapted to the Avalanche, how well he has taken his role as a penalty killer, you know, as a big part of the role he has for the Avalanche. But he comes up with a huge goal for Colorado. And again, Mike, one of the fun things is I'm on the bench here. The bench just exploded. They were just... Oh, for Nate to get that goal. Right, I'll show you the Kia scoring summary. Nate Gannon, there's that first goal. What a big one it is. Come in the first minute of the third period. Gabe Landeskog and Paul Stastny with the assist. And the Avalanche are up 2-1. to one. On the face-off, Bats has got it. Hold it. Backhanded off the boards. Out towards center. Flipped across, Hader. To the red line. Shot to the corner. Duchesne centers. And chopped wide. Morris. Long pass through center. Scooped up by Doan. Cuts across. Shot. Got tip one of the net. McMillan gets the rebound for Phoenix. Switches his way into the corner. Turns again. O'Reilly on him. Great defensive play there by Ryan O'Reilly. A bite for Duchesne. 
Makes his way to the red line and scoops the puck ahead. Long pass to center. Blocked off by Gannon. Right now, he's the hero for the Avalanche. Early third period goal. Given the Avs their first lead of the game. Pass high for Gannon. Rich shot. Right into it. Moss and Phoenix. Puck drops down. Flicked away. Bounced off the boards. Talbot keeps the puck in play. Shot saved by Grice. Rebound back in. Try by McGinn. That's stopped by Grice. McGinn again with the puck for Colorado. Skates to the corner. Turn it back for Mitchell. Spins it around. McGinn on it. Back to Talbot. Another good shift from this line. Talbot turns and shoots. And one of the Phoenix players right in front of the net. Lemko blocked that one. Talbot coming back into the Colorado zone. Makes the handoff to Benoit. Drift back behind the net. Big chase by Doan. Makes the pass ahead. For starts to the red line. Shot in on a hop. Steered away by Grice. Doan's pass. And back into the center. To the red line. Chipped in from center ice by Yammer. Please. Turns it up the board, centering pass, shot, and Varlamov in the perfect spot to make the save, and he does. Well, you, look, you look at the lineup tonight for the Avalanche, and Talbot on this line. He became a father yesterday. Jackson, Jackson, Talbot, again, did Avalanche defense. We saw Gannon score down low. But they're not afraid to jump up into the play. They have been given, the, Mike, the freedom to jump into the play. And they have done a terrific job. Again, yeah, pass up the middle. Deflected like across. Back to center right. And we got a whistle. Man, Mike, I just wanted to correct one thing. Because I kept saying, Mike, what have I missed? It, it, it was reported that Buffalo had now, with the trade they made today, they had 10 first-round picks in the first round of this year's draft and next year's draft. Is they've got 10 picks in the first two rounds. Well, I feel a lot better now. I think, how? What did I miss? What did I miss? Where were they stockpiling these first-round picks? Still Where are they awesome. getting them? Right? Exactly. <laughs> Who was making these trades? But that, but that's still an awful lot of high picks for the Buffalo Sabres. And for a team that's been down, boy, if you can make those draft picks count, Peter, you can rebuild a, a franchise pretty quickly. McKinnon pass across, shot saved by Grice, and he covers the rebound. And again, who took the shot? Holding the defenseman, jumping up into the play. One of the things the coaches to talk a lot about what Holden has brought to the Avalanche. Took him a while to get into the lineup. Took him a while to sort of get his bearings for the Avalanche. But boy, he has got good offensive instincts. He jumps up. I mean, he, he adds to the offense every time he's on the ice. Bounce wide of the net. Played off the boards. Picked up by O'Reilly. Coming down the middle, he shoots, and he missed. Parento chops at the puck. Read up by the Coyotes. Stone, crisscrossing at center. Pushed the puck ahead for Botker. Go get <laughs> Meanwhile, Mike Ribeiro still serving that 10-minute misconduct penalty. Chain shot misses wide. And Ribeiro is the leading scorer for this Phoenix Coyotes team. Hasn't been available through this third period for the Phoenix. It'll be, it'll be like almost 11 minutes he'll have missed. And then on top of it, we have 12 minutes that he's missed, and the Avalanche didn't score in the power play. Like he has to wait until a whistle. So it could be 13, 14 minutes that he'll miss. Mitchell cuts in. Gets the puck to Talbot. First it behind the net. Up the boards, waiting. Barry. Pushes it back behind the net for Talbot. In the Phoenix zone. Centers for Mitchell. Kicked out. By Grice. Mitchell again with the puck. Cross ice. There's a great chance and missed wide. Again, it was Nate Gennon in a good spot. In the slot for Talbot. Pushed away. Coyotes move to center. Moss receives the pass. Going back towards Gennon. Moss bites him off. Makes the pass. 
shot. Deflected off the of Barry to the corner. Big collision. And again, knocked the stick away from Shimshura. And the puck is shot down the ice. Fourteen twenty to go in the period. Colorado leading two to one. Got the goal from Nate Dennis. Landis God stands the assisting here in the third period. Race for the puck. First to it, Kyle Chichura. Who's behind the net, trying to center, was deflected away. And backhanded out. By the Avalanche. Bordolo got it to center ice. Coyotes have the puck again. Verbata, poke check away from him. Racing after McKinnon, sprints in. Cutting in, backhander, save made by Grice. Shot, and score! Great pass by Landeskog, and Stasty finished with the goal, but that does not happen without the speed of McKinnon. Uh, just, just, you know, again, you look at what we talked about earlier. Stasny and Landeskog using the speed of McKinnon. They bounce in on the play, perfect pass by Landeskog. But you saw the defenseman, they just got tied up with the speed. They, they switched perfectly. Morris and Yendo, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. They, they communicated, they switched. But McKinnon was so fast, he skated around. Now, three to one for Colorado. Two big goals here in the third period. Landeskog gets his second assist here in this period. McKinnon gets another point, right? That's 10 games in a row now. Aaron in, down the slot for Met with a drive. And that's kicked away by Varlamov. And we got a whistle. The puck had gone out of play after the save by Varlamov. Goals from Genin and Stastny's 3-1 Avalanche. Let's answer tonight's Did You Know question presented by Stevenson Automotive. Who is the last rookie to have a 10-game scoring streak in the NHL? Jonathan Taves. The correct answer. Congratulations, Jason. You do that correct answer. It's kind of interesting for Taves. Like, it was the, he had a point in each of his very first 10 NHL games. One point in each game, the first 10 games. Of course, you know what's happened to his career. Yeah. Got, got pretty well. Yeah. Oh, that one dribbled off of Sarge and Varlamov alert. Able to cover and get another face off. But you look at the, the longest avalanche rookie scoring streaks and one of the greatest of all time. Paul Stastny might. Yeah, remarka that's yes. a remarkable string, isn't it? 20 games. That's, I mean, as a rookie. As anybody. Yeah, <laughs> but emphasize that much more just yeah. in your first year. It's amazing. Well, the Avalanche made this one three to one. Tightly contested. They fell behind in the first period. And now scored three unanswered goals after neither team was able to score in the second period. Avalanche taking that one one tie and a couple of goals here in the third. Gannon and Stasty. Landis Gog with a couple of assists. The Avalanche up three to one. Three's a little bit easier, but this Phoenix Coyotes team, if anything, a Dave Tippett team, Peter, they do not give up. Her bottom turns and shoots it wide. Shot by Morris, and he clubbed that one wide in the net. Beckman Larson was headed to the bench. He'll shoot the puck across. Morris then makes the change. Hayden first to back and stolen away. McMillan shot in front, bouncing puck goes wide. Go along the far wing, pass broken up, and the puck comes out to center ice. Stepping up, Hayden shoots the puck in. In the corner, Talbot. Gonna come out in front, centering pass picked off. Pass comes to center to the red line. Back across, that's broken up, Yandel. Fires it across for Mick. Fires wide. Mitchell waiting along the far wing. Bounces out to center. Little roll 
towards goaltender Grice. He steers it. Puck carried to center by Slipka. Puck in. Bounce back against the center. Like this is that time you have to, you just, if you're going fast, you go faster. If you're the Avalanche, because it's tough to come back. Shot and Barlamov got the blocker up, made the save, but there's going to be a penalty on the Avalanche. So the Coyotes down by two in the third. We'll get another power play chance. Here's, here, here is that opportunity, the Avalanche. Colorado number 15. Two minutes for slashing. Stick on man, man goes down. But for the Avalanche, right, it's one of the things they're going to have to learn inside of this, these last games and growing is sort of that puck management. Make sure that it's always on the outside. You give nothing through the middle. And, you know, the Avalanche, we've, they've seen a couple of pretty good opportunities by Phoenix, and now they get a power play. And their only goal in tonight's game is the power play. And again, I tell you, Yendo is having a good game for this Phoenix club. Two for slashing. So off, slashing penalty called at 8.52. Vermette, pass, broken up momentarily by Talbot, recovered. Ekman Larson shot goes wide, back in try. By Doan gets stopped. Kept in play by the Coyotes in the Avalanche zone. Pass for Vermette, that right back for Yandel. Slides it over, side of the net. For Doan, give it off, and the shot hit the post. Back to Ekman Larson. Put behind the net for Doan. Stripped away and hate it. No doubt about that one as he shoots that one the length of the ice. Just over a minute remaining in the parent to penalty. Mitchell. Shot up the ice and a block. And it's cleared out by McLeod. Rice will set it. Cloud cleared it out, but it was Benoit on the boards that made the play to strip the man of the puck. There it is down the wing, passing the slide. Ekman Larson with a chance. Great set rebound. Oh, did Baloma come out and challenge? Ekman Larson back and cross for Yandel. Down the boards. Verbata cutting in. Pass to Hansen. Back to the point for Yandel. Shot wide. 15 seconds left in Parenteau's penalty. Mike, Barlamov is sort of stretching his right arm. Still so active in coming out and challenging the shooter. But I'm saying stretching it like, like something maybe is bothering him a little bit. There's a chance, and uh, the Coyotes crashed the net right into Barlamov. As the uh, penalty has expired, Avs had to see a couple of shots go on net, but they still lead by two. Well, here are the streaks we were talking about. Paul Stastny in his rookie season in 07, like 20 game streak. Nathan McKinnon, Ted, Kevin Shattenkirk now with the St. Louis Blues, had a nine game streak, but Nathan McKinnon, with, I mean, and that one was like, there's, there's, there's skill, there's shooting, that one was just speed. He just broke in around Morris, who, and, and I guarantee you, Morris thought at the start of that play, he had the right angle. The kid just went around him, and then Stastny and Landis got great job of being right there on top of the puck when it was chipped out. Back to play with nine minutes left in the third. Chipped in from center. Backhanded around. Lift it up and out. Sure, has the puck for Phoenix. Take it away, get it. The puck around. Lift it up the far side boards. Turn back behind the net. Barry will get to it. Drops it off. Pass to center for Duchesne. He breaks free. That's Andy shoots and shot it high. Well, that puck is coming off his stick in a hurry. You know. Makes the pass for McKinnon. Dropped it off from Landeskog. Strong third period here for the Avalanche. Two key assists for Colorado. 
Close to the corner. Race for the puck. Landis Scott's pass. Plays for Stafford. Bounce for Landis Scott. And he had McKinnon break it in, and Morris at the last moment just put his stick out to deflect the pass. Absolutely. McKinnon was just. Was Landis Scott just couldn't quite settle down. Nice steal by Mitchell. Cutting down the middle. Poke check from behind. Hold time to the puck along the boards. Freed up. Hansel. Reaching for it. Starts dives and knocked it away, but it's going to get a penalty. I'd like to see that replay again, Peter. Where the penalty comes well, from. You know, the usual rule of thumb, if you get the puck first, it's okay. Sarge does a great job. Now, does he get the puck first? That's called a yeah. tripping penalty. Uh, you know, the, the Avalanche and Phoenix hold a unique distinction. Like they're the only clubs in the league that have not had a power, or pardon me, a penalty shot for or against this season. Are you trying to say there was a small case to be made there? Well, if you're going to call the penalty. Well, it is just a two-minute minor. Allies penalty, number 16. Sarge for tripping. It is 12.42. At 12 minutes, 42 seconds. Fourth power play chance of the game. Second here in the third period for Phoenix. They're one for three. Mervana gets a bounce in front of the net. It back towards the point for Ekman Larson to Yandel. He shoots. Glove save made by Barlamov. Visit your local Kia retailer today and get great lease and APR deals for qualified lessees and buyers on Kia's full line of quality vehicles. You can go to ColoradoKiaDealers.com and get all the details. Right, the, the Coyotes have some big forwards. On the first group, Hansel is the guy that goes to the front of the net. He's 6'6". On the last one, now this power play is Doan, who's just a, a bull. 6'1", 6'2", Mike, but he's about 220 pounds. Bacher plays the puck to the point for Yandel. Flicked it back for Bacher, cuts in, he shoots and misses. Back around, and that one curled away from Yandel. He'll chase the puck. Finds Bacher in the middle zone. Gives to Ekman Larson, tap back. 110 left in starts tripping penalty. Pass sent across. And for behind the net. Handled by the Coyotes. To the point for Yandel. His shot tipped towards the front of the net. Pushed back towards Yandel at the point. Slides it across. Back towards Yandel. One timer score! May have been tipped yeah. in front by. Stone. It was. We'll have to see on the replay, Peter, if he did tip it. It seemed like it changed direction and went up high. Yeah, he, you know, this is this is a situation where you got two good point men, and Ekman Larson and Yandel, and, and they're going to get pucks through. Did a nice job, nice pass across. And that's just a, a perfect tip up and over Barlamov. Coyotes did a lot of Good things on that, didn't they, Peter? Yeah, great, they, great yeah. saucer pass, and then, wait, well, Yandel didn't waste any time. He one time that from the point. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's become one of the real keys to being that tremendous point man in the league. You got to get it through quick. You got to get through in a hurry. You got to read what you're. Do you have a wrist shot? Do you have the slap shot? In that case, it was a slap shot. But for the Avalanche, now, okay, they didn't like the call. You know, you're a little bit upset in the bench, but the idea is you're still up by one, and you've got. Five, almost, like, almost six minutes to go in the game. No more mistakes. In the corner, where the puck is for bottom. So Yandel, Ekman, Larson, the two defensemen assisting on that power play goal. Second power play goal of the game for Doan. Pass comes free, but popped away from McKinnon. We're back behind the net. Just down the corner, pushed back to the point. Hita smacks it around. Starts pinches in from the point. 
Put to the corner for McKinnon. Back up the board. Block. Assisted by number three, Keith And the give goes to Yandel. To the red line. Shot in, head high on Barlama. He'll flick it away. Push to center ice. For Met over the line for Doan. Back behind for Botker. Centering pass in the slot. Turns back towards the boards. By Ekman Larson, he stripped the puck, O'Reilly. No! Skeet through. Chasing the puck to the corner in the Phoenix zone. Vermette waves the puck to center. Puts the head to the corner. Naruto skates to center. Set over the line. For Duchesne. Cuts in, he shoots, and Duchesne draws a penalty. So the Avalanche will get a power play opportunity when we return. The Coyotes get a power play goal to make it a one-goal game, but the Avalanche coming back after this timeout with a power play. Hurry into the Appliance Factory Outlet 12-hour 40% off super sale on Saturday. Thousands of brand new appliances and the largest selection around. Well, and Matt Duchesne got back to the box for the Avalanche. He got high five for just the effort. He just worked his way and kept the man to the outside. Good strength, good balance, forcing the defenseman to take the penalty. Now the Avalanche on the power play. Got around the boards, picked up in the corner. Pushed up the wing. Avalanche get it back. It's a power play chance for Colorado. Sent around the wall. Back towards the point for Holden, to the right point, Parento. Got a power play goal in this game, he's got the puck again, his shot gets blocked. Back to Parento. He gets to Duchesne. Back to the point for Parento. Shot through some traffic, gets blocked, and it bounces. And ricochets out to center. Holden, he's to Duchesne. Cross ice pass, gets tipped. Carried through and carried in for Met Wise and fires off the chest of Barlamo. That is now 37 shots in this game for the Coyotes. And the goaltenders have been very good in this game. There's been lots of quality chances. McKinnon centers in the slot. Shot score! Gabe Landeskog. That's his third point of the period. There was an interesting play that just happened. McKinnon's coming onto the ice, Mike, and he is going to be that forward that's going to have to play defense. But he goes way, way wide, way wide, and let Vermette walk in. But then all of a sudden, that allowed the other Phoenix forward to sort of come down deep, and now it was a three-on-two going the other way. Great pass, great read by Landis Scott. Again, the defenseman jumps up in the play. That a lot. Well, in this case, a point man, Parento. But that a lot. Oh, another penalty call with three minutes left. And then we got a little something happening as well. After the whistle, McKinnon has to be pushed away. You see, Weinsman working with McKinnon. That is. The Avalanche rookie being ushered away from that pile towards the penalty box. He's going to be in the box. Let's go back to the goal and again. Just drive into the outside. And when he stops, you see the defenseman for the Avalanche. Barry coming in low. Lana's got great shot up over. Cannon in the box now. This is the last game between these two clubs this season. Boy, man, this has been a great third period, hasn't it? Oh my goodness. So we did nothing in the second. I thought that, you know, it was going to be an automatic 2-1 game. They've, they've just exploded. Like, but this Coyote team, Peter, they have scored two power play goals in this game. They're going to get another kick at the bucket here. With the puck, 
Played back by Vermette. Split across. Yandel keeps it in play. Ekman Larson with a big drive and a nice glove save made by Barlamov. Time for What's on Tap, brought to you by Coors Light. Sunday, Military Appreciation Night. The Avalanche host the Tampa Bay Lightning. Complete coverage begins at 5.30, only on your home of the Avalanche, Altitude Sports. Puck trickles free. Diving. Tipped away by Talbot, but Ekman Larson corrals the puck. Circles back behind the net. Makes a pass. Back to the point for Yandel. Slides it across. Vodka with drills a shot and it's blocked. Back to Yandel. Shot knocked down. Loose puck. Shot. Oh, it didn't go in. It did not go in. Oh, wow, it was that close, but it didn't go in. One minute left to McKinnon's penalty. Shot. Blood saved by Lowe. Oh, I'll tell you, from the angle on the bench, it just looked like there's no way that that wasn't going to go in. Because he had to explode back across. I think Barley's mask. I'm not sure if it, if, if, if it was on that play. They're asking Phoenix to say, how long does he have? What's the, what, is, what is the discussion about here, Peter? What, what are the Avalanche engaging this discussion about? All right, Mike, I, I, am, I am not 100% sure. Is it the clock? Do they think this is of time? Well, right now it says 57 seconds left in McKinnon's penalty. 1.56 to go in the period. Grice has been pulled. So it's a six on four skating situation for the Coyotes. And there'll be some big bodies in front of Varlamov. Puck comes straight, poked away by Varlamov, who has made 39 saves in this game, going for the empty netter and missed by McLeod. And that's fine, you know, when you're down a man, it's fine to ice the puck in those situations. Behind the net, Orlamo chip it around, but it was deflected. It hit the netting above the glass. The puck has gone out of play. Well, they're asking. They're, they're thinking, they're, Phoenix thinks it should be a penalty. And, and the question is, was it deflected, right? Oh, well, yeah, exactly. From where I was, I, I did not see... But they're, I mean, they're confirming right now what a big moment this would be. It was deflected, so therefore it might... Boy, I tell you, talk about a big decision. If it's not deflected, it's a penalty in the faceoffs in the avalanche zone. Six on three. If it was deflected, as they're saying it was, Mike, it's a faceoff outside the zone. It's a big call. Grice remains on the bench. Avalanche have O'Reilly, Talbot, Yen. Buck is shot down the ice, as well as Hayda. Those are the four skaters for Colorado. 115 left. Steal by O'Reilly. Go, go. The puck ahead. Pass through the middle, deflected to the corner. Left around, blocked by Bodker. One. And then penalty on McKinnon is over. Ekman Larson makes the pass in the final minute. Shot the flex to the corner. McKinnon's got it. Going to fling the puck out, but that gets blocked. And Benoit, a chip of the head for McKinnon. Gets the red line. Skates in, going towards the empty net. Makes a nice pass. Shot gets blocked in that try by Talbot. Right. Give it back to McKinnon. He could have shot that himself. He looked for Talbot to make the pass with an empty net. You love that, don't you, Peter? I just absolutely... Uh, 
I, never mind our love, it's his teammates' love. And, and you're an 18-year-old kid and you do that? Whipped by Verbata. Down the last 20 seconds of the game. Pass behind the net. Block. Kicked at behind the net. Still kicking around. Wrapped around dry. Stopped by Varlamov. And then uh, Phoenix crashes the net. Things get a little ugly after that. Well, the Avalanche with three goals in this third period. Landeskog had a part in all three of them. Oh, what a, what a and, and, and Mike, you, you, you're looking. We talked to the start of the period. Who's going to be the hero? Who's going to come up with a big game? Who's going to be that guy? Gabriel Landeskog, a goal, a couple of assists in a 4-2 win now for the Avalanche. And they're going to move. That they, Mike, they moved to 81 points. They keep that momentum going. Farley's going to win his 29th game of the season. The, they had last game, it was Duchesne that was outstanding offensively with the big numbers. Tonight, it's Stastny in his line. So that's the kind of balance that you love. And this was not, a, not an easy hockey game. Phoenix, give them full marks, but they came to play. 42 shots on goal. It's, it's a big night offensively. 40 saves for Varlamov. Are they looking at this, Michael? The puck did end up going yeah, in, but it did, did end with up. the whistle blowing. Well, at very worst, if they called it a goal, Mike, it would be a face-off at center ice. It wouldn't be a face-off now still in the Avalanche zone. But here's another look at it right here. Okay, 6.7 seconds. They were just looking at the time. Okay, there's when the whistle was blowing. Referee. It's actually the referee who pulled the net off the boards. So they changed the time. There's 6.7 yep. seconds left. Rice is back in the net. And that's going to do it for the Avalanche. Barlamov with 40 saves. Landis Geig with a three-point third period. Nick Gannon gets his first goal for the Avalanche. And what a win for Colorado. 4-2 over Phoenix. Yeah, a nice comeback win. After the last game against the LA Kings, one they felt that they maybe they threw it away a little bit, being up four to two. But tonight, like the, the real water loop for this club, was the score was three two, and they got a power play, and the game was right there. They didn't take a stranglehold up, and they did, and they win a big one for themselves, and really a, a big that first win after the Olympics. A lot of good stuff. Max Talbot got the puck, like to celebrate. His son being born, but a big yeah. team win, and Barley very good again for the Avalanche. Well, the Avalanche, Landis Scott got his 50th uh, career NHL goal tonight, and the Avalanche get that win. Next up, Winnipeg on Sunday, but now the Avs get to celebrate this one as they head towards the locker room following their 4-2 victory over the Phoenix Coyotes tonight here at Pepsi Center. All right, let's listen in. We hear the announcement of tonight's Coors Molson Three stars of the game. For tonight's three stars of the game, as selected by Mike Haynes of Altitude TV. Tonight's third star from the Avalanche with his first goal on the season, number five, Nick Gannon. Tonight's second star with 40 saves in the win, number one, Samuel Marlaba. And tonight's first star from the Avalanche with a goal and an assist, number 92, the captain, Gabriel Landeskog. And our number one star is standing by with Julie Brownman. All right, Gabe, I think we should all take a deep breath. Are these the kind of games we should be expecting for the next 22 games? Absolutely. It's only going to get better. And I, and I think for us, this is the exciting part. And I hope you guys feel the same way. This Phoenix team, this was a tough game, although they played last night. They needed to win this game. It's a big win for the Avalanche. you guys feel like that? 
Absolutely. I mean, we want to catch St. Louis and we want to catch, catch Chicago as well. So uh, we're not satisfied. We're going to keep going and, and uh, certainly working hard. It's quite a third period. You had three points in these big games. The big players of the team, the big names, show up. Uh, yeah, I think as a team we did a good job. I think first two periods it was a pretty close game, and then in the third I think we took over and Barley made some unbelievable saves. Thanks, Gabe. Thank you. All right, back up to you, Mike. All right, thanks very much, uh, Julie. There's your first star, Gabe Landeskog, part of the 4-2 victory for the Avalanche. Please join us again Sunday. Avalanche will be hosting the Winnipeg Jets. Complete coverage beginning at 5.30. Now, let's get you to the studio. It's time for the Go Auto Group Locker Room Report.